Today we got a bevy of news stories for you guys, four really big ones here. Look, we got to talk about that Mario Wonder Direct, but actually there's something surrounding it that has to do with the next Nintendo Direct, which is happening next month. So whew, that's kind of exciting to talk about. Oh, Sega seems to put its foot in its mouth, arguing one of the most popular video game art styles of all time is suddenly no longer going to be used by pretty much anyone, especially themselves, and basically arguing that it's going to go out of existence. So we can talk about that. Oh, and we're not done! Because you know what? We have a couple updates on some upcoming Nintendo Switch releases, including brand new release dates and trailers. Woo! It's going to be a really exciting show. So if you're enjoying this episode of Prime News, I would appreciate if you would go ahead and subscribe to the channel, drop a like on this video, wriggling that dingling to, well, get notified of all future videos, and hey, help us get to 150,000 subscribers. All right, folks, before we dive in, this video is sponsored by Into the AM. Into the AM creates some of the softest shirts out there, soft, and yeah, I absolutely love them. I'm wearing one right now. You see it? Right here, right here, into the AM. It's one of their basic tees. I literally wear their things every day. My fiance wears them to bed. They feel so nice. Industry best prints, super high quality, and I've owned these shirts for years without any fading. Can't promise that'll be the case for you. It's gonna depend on your laundry. La la la, lots of disclaimers. But today they're advertising some of their bundles because it's a great way to save a bunch of money and get a ton of shirts. So what are we talking about? Well, it's a bundle of items such as basic t-shirts, like what I'm wearing, or print and tees, polos, underwear, shorts, and whatever. You can get a whole bunch of custom packs in which you can choose any size, color, design, etc. And you end up with an inbuilt discount over buying them individually. As an example, you can get a six pack of the same basic t-shirts like what I'm wearing in this video for $94.94, which is almost $40 off the price of buying those six shirts individually. Better yet, using code Nintendo Prime 10 or clicking on the link down in the description or pinned comment, you can get an additional 10% percent off of your order what are you waiting for check out into the am today <laughs> So our first video deals with an interview that, well, the head of Sonic Superstars and so a member of the Sega team put his foot in his mouth just a smidge when interviewing with Games Radar Plus. What are we talking about? Well, in this interview, Sonic Superstars producer Takahashi Izuki said this about the future of Sonic and art directions. When we talk about the brand, we definitely need to have a modern 3D Sonic game. We also need to have a classic Sonic 2D game. Those are our fundamental pillars that we need to have. We're expanding into movies and TV, but we still need to have both the 3D and 2D lineup for our gaming audience. Last year, we released Sonic Frontiers, and what Sonic Frontiers was doing is taking the open zone concept to cement that 3D Sonic gameplay as something we can build on for the next 10 to 20 years to continue bringing new gameplay experiences to players. It was really the evolution of where the 3D Sonic space was going, and we feel very proud in what the team was able to deliver. We look at pixel art. It's great. But when we think about 10 to 20 years in the future, we don't think it's going to be a viable art style or presentation for our players. And in order to advance and really step things up, we did want to make sure that we're presenting something that 10 to 20 years down the road, we're still evolving and creating new content for. Let me repeat that again in case you missed it. We look at pixel art, it's great. But then we think about 10 to 20 years in the future and we don't think it's going to be a viable art style or presentation. <sighs> Boy, what's interesting about that is the highest rated Sonic game of all time is Sonic Mania Plus, and the original 2017 release of Sonic Mania is in the mid 80s. It went on to sell several million copies. Beyond that, pixel art has merely grown more and more popular as seen in a big resurgence today. Games like Octopath Traveler 2 and today's epic release called Sea of Stars. This year alone, shows excellent progress in modernizing the pixel art style while keeping it fresh with high praise and great sales. While we may experience some brief periods where pixel art 
could go away. It's highly likely, just like today, to continue to persist and see resurgence many times over the next 10 to 20 years. While this statement was mostly talking about their approach to 2D and 3D Sonic, it seems strange to dismiss a very popular art direction, especially when we have seen so many youth start taking to pixel art style games in stuff like Roblox and really even more so, Minecraft. So yeah, I don't really understand this argument when today's youth is getting more and more into pixel art styles and seeing the appeal and not caring as much about the best of the best graphics out there. But you know what? The Sonic team and Sega are going to do what they're going to do and I guess they're trying to get away from the pixel art style even though it tends to be the highest rated and best performing games. I mean, art style doesn't make the game alone, but for some reason, it seems to click. Just not with them. I don't know, man. Next up, we have to talk about Front Mission 2 Remake. Man, when's the last time we talked about this game? Have we ever talked about it? Well, it's a good thing we're going to do it now because we have a brand new trailer with a release date and some information coming from a PR email. So let's just dive right in. As you're seeing at the end of the trailer, it does come to Switch on October 5th of 2023, and it says 12 years have passed since the second Huffman conflict. The impoverished People's Republic of Elderdesh has suffered severe economic decline since the war ended. In June of 2102, soldiers of the Elderdesh army rise up and led by Ven in Mackeridge, they declare independence from the OCU, the Oceana Cooperative Union. In Front Mission 2 Remake, the perspective switches between three characters, Ash, Lisa, and Thomas, creating a worldview that goes beyond a simple dichotomy between good and evil. Now, these are some features they're advertising, engaging storyline, strategic turn-based combat, Wanzer customization, modernized battle scenes, free camera options, modern in-game effects, renewed soundtrack, and nine language localizations. What are you waiting for? Get your hands on this game today and get it pre-ordered, coming out October 5th. Now we're not done with talking about games because a new trailer has dropped for Fate slash Samurai Remnant. Here it is, and yes, we have some PR goodness explaining this game as well. Now remember, this game does drop literally next month, September 28th, about a month from today. Anyways, throughout the Fate franchise, pairs of masters and heroic spirits, also known as servants, have been fighting across history in a series of holy grail wars, with the winning duo receiving an ancient artifact that grants wishes. Fate slash Samurai Remnant continues the series' epic Holy Grail War in the fourth year of the Kian era, the Edo period, Japan. It has been several decades since the end of the turbulent but blood-soaked era. And while the people are finally enjoying peace and tranquility, a battle between seven pairs of masters and servants is about to begin as the waxing moon ritual unfolds in the shadows. This is where the game's hero, Miyamoto Lori, not to be confused with Miyamoto Shigeru, or the other way around, <laughs> a young man in Asakusa finds himself caught in the violence alongside his servant Saber as they fight to be the last pair remaining in order to receive the grantor of wishes, the waxing moon vessel. In Fate Slash Samurai Remnant, players control Miyamoto Lori, a master who studied the Nichin Ichiruo style. I'm totally sorry for butchering these names, guys. We'll put a link to where you can read this for yourself. Anyways, it's a style of swordsmanship. He fights alongside Saber, a servant who possesses strength beyond that of humans. When facing enemies beyond human control, players will be able to instruct their servant to attack with powerful magic techniques or even take direct control of the servant to attack the enemy swarm. Dynamic battle scenes between servants help elevate the action to new heights and are must-see contests for fans of the series. By the way, if you happen to pre-order the game, you can get access to the phantasmal dress Miyamoto Masashusi. I don't know, it's some sort of in-game DLC cosmetic. Now for you physical collectors out there, there is a treasure box option for $115. It includes the Fate Slash Samurai Remnant game for Nintendo Switch. Wait for it, here it comes. Almost there. It also includes the Fate Slash Samurai Remnant Material Design Works Plus Short Story, an original soundtrack CD, an official short story translation booklet, a B2 sized cloth poster, command spell stickers, the treasure box costume DLC code, Phantasmal Dress Miyamoto Lori, and Phantasmal Dress Saber, along with a treasure box collector's box. Because, you know, 
You say that nine times for a treasure box, collector's box. Oh, anyways, on the digital side, you can get the digital deluxe edition or a standard edition. The digital deluxe edition includes a digital art book and soundtrack, the season pass for DLC 1 to 3, and the season pass bonus of the Hollowed Relic Sword Mountings. So what are you waiting for? This game comes out next month. Get out your wallets, get out your credit cards, and go down and, well, pre-order the damn thing. Why not? All right. Last but not least, we have to talk about the Super Mario Direct happening in a couple of days. Nintendo announced it earlier. Okay, we're not actually going to talk about that. We're going to talk about the Nintendo Direct coming out next week. But first, we have to talk about this particular thing. Because while Nintendo announced there's a Super Mario Bros. Wonder Direct happening this Thursday at 9 a.m. Central Time. Did you get it? Are you going to be here? We got a pre-show. It's going to be awesome. Get your notifications set. But uh, look, guys, somebody told us this was happening. Somebody out there who I have not always thought the greatest of things about told us that we should be expecting this stuff this week. You know who it was? None other than Zippo. And said, I have to give him credit for this. We need to pay attention to the other things he said because it has to do with an upcoming Nintendo Direct that isn't this Mario one. Let's dive in. So first he has this post over here that says, prepare for a wonderful week. Hello. Are we all having a good week so far? Yes, I see you crazy folks in the comments. Relax. I'm hearing multiple different days for when this Direct is supposed to drop, from all the way to Thursday to next week. I'm going to be on the safe side and say that early next week will be the air date. That's just my most educated guess right now. That said, there's something else to look forward to this week. Remember, he said this yesterday. That's right, we are indeed getting a Mario Wonder blowout this week, presumably either Wednesday or Thursday. We now know it's Thursday. Expect a deluge of new information about the game. That begs the question though, why would Nintendo do this ahead of a Direct that's supposed to be airing soon? I don't know to be honest, but Nintendo has done plenty of weird things like this before. Maybe they just want Wonder out of the way now. Maybe they have something even bigger. Who knows? Regardless, prepare for a fun week ahead. Let's a go, wowie zowie. Not gonna do the voice on that one, not very good. But you know what? He didn't stop there, because it was announced today, and uh, well, he wanted to beat his chest a little bit. I don't blame him. There, ya happy? My God. People were losing their minds in the comments about this. Congrats, you wasted all of your energy on nothing. If people came here expecting me to deliver an epic mic drop or something, then you're going to be disappointed. Well, it might not be epic, but he does sort of drop the mic later. We'll get to this. It's 9 a.m. in the morning. I'm exhausted. Being a parent means you're always tired. That's pretty much true. That said, I'm happy and very excited that this is happening this week. I'm super eager to see more of the game, and 15 minutes of new details is more than enough for me. Some questions you're no doubt asking. Are we getting a general direct in September? Yes, of course. I mean, that's the big question, right? Will the direct still have a big focus on Mario? Yes. Did RGT just commenting for engagement 85 just get his dumb arse embarrassed again for the entire internet to see? You're goddamn right he did. See, there's the, there's the little mic drop. Anywho, folks, I'm going back to bed. I'm tired. See ya on Thursday. Now, we're not going to get involved in some of the YouTube bashing that went on there. Like, that's just Zippo's personal grudge against RGT. We're actually pretty friendly with RGT, and we're working to get them actually on a future Nintendo Prime podcast episode, lining up schedules. It is what it is. But on the rest, hey, look, he did get it right. I am going to give him a smidge of credit for it. And he, look, if a general Nintendo Direct also happens next week, he called it. I mean, he called both. It is what it is. So we'll have to wait and see. Obviously, you can still have a heavy focus on Mario. They have four major Mario games. So like Mario Wonder, sure, that's one thing. What about Super Mario RPG? You know, the HD remastering. What about the HD remastering or whatever they're doing, the hd ifying of Luigi's Mansion Dark Moon? Hey, that's Mario's damn brother. Oh, and what about the Peach game? They have four major mario S games dropping in the next six months. Yeah, they can still have a lot of Mario in this Direct. Oh, by the way, they still have to announce the DLC, the final DLC pack for Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. That's five major things they could have to talk about. So I, I'm, I'm just saying that it does make some sense that it's going to be heavily focused on Mario. But what about a Metroid Prime 4? What about a Metroid Prime 2 Echoes Shadow Drop? Can't rule that out, can we? Oh, look, I got to stop putting my hands back here like this. I don't know what I'm doing. Do I got to run fast? I have no idea. Whew. Thank you so much for tuning in. We'll catch you in the next video.